Hey everybody, what's going on and welcome to Guns N' Roses Central and let's talk about uh, another episode of Guns N' Roses True Story. So I want to talk today about how Melissa Reese actually joined Guns N' Roses. So a lot of people were kind of just surprised to see her at the Troubadour gig on April 1st, 2016, but they really don't know the backstory of how she actually joined the band. And in order to learn that, you guys have to go 10 years back to 2006. So she did an interview in Cosmopolitan Magazine in 2017 and talked about how she joined the band. So she said she met Brain, who was a drummer for Guns N' Roses back during the Chinese democracy era. Um, so he was a drummer back in 2006 when she met him before Frank uh, joined the band. And she basically said, I found that as soon as I met him creatively, we clicked and it was on. In 2007, I did an EP called Lissa. I was in the studio with Brain and he had an urban dictionary and he was literally opening up to random pages, throwing up a beat, going, sing about this, write a hook about that. Words like emo, feels, beef, drank, creepin'. Those songs were written in under two hours, and then this dude who was running this label heard it through his friends and said, I want to buy those. I was like, you want to pay me thousands of dollars for this stuff? This happens in life? I was like, I can keep doing this. I have two more hours, let's write 50 more songs. I was over the moon, it was a media EP, meaning it was sent to music supervisors as music you can use in your show if you want. Tracks were on a ton of shows, including Keeping Up With The Kardashians and Gossip Girl. Now, she said, our next break came when Brain went to NAM, which was the National Academy of Music Merchants convention, where vendors go to show their new products to the music community. He met a Sony music supervisor there who was a fan of Brain's drumming, and the Sony exec said, why don't you come play drums on this video game we're working on? And then Brain called me and said, I think I'm going to just push and be like, can we have a shot at doing some of the actual music? He got us a shot. They gave us some music to listen to of the game in that series that had come right before. I remember us putting it on and staring at each other like it sounded huge. It sounded like Hans Zimmer. We were screaming and running around the room. We're never going to be able to do this. What the F? Now we're, gonna, now we're on the hook. We're going to look horrible in front of all these people. What are we going to do? So she said, we ended up getting it together and kicking ass on it and they gave us a job. You have to do like 200 minutes of music for these games, all the scenarios, all the battles. From then on, we started doing more and more games. Eventually, we got our first film, which was Joseph Kahn's Detention from 2011. We had a mutual friend who said, you guys are doing all this cool shit. Did you ever think maybe you could do this movie? It always happens like that. So she said, you sort of get into music and then you end up in tribes. Karim Costanzo, who produced Chinese Democracy, was somebody in the tribe. He's a good friend of Brains. He's a good friend of mine. Karim called me in March of 2016 and brought up the possibility of me coming in uh, and meeting the band because there was a need for a new keyboard player. I thought it was an effing joke. I was trying to ask him about his wife and his new baby and all the stuff, and he wasn't about that. He was like, no, we need to talk. So basically, uh, Melissa went on to say, a couple days later, I hear from him again. Think about, all, think about that at all. So I started to take it more seriously, and then it got really serious a couple days after the second call when I got a call from Brain. What's going on? I heard Axel is thinking about bringing you in. What do you think about this? Axel loves Brain. They still have a great relationship. Since my name had been put up for discussion, Axel wanted to know obviously what Brain thought. So Brain told me, this is a very intense thing that you have to consider. If the opportunity presents itself, you can't say no. And I'm like, but I'm scared. And he said, you have to experience this. Are you crazy? So Karim asked me to come in. I'd met Axel and Dizzy once way before when they played the House of Blues in 2012. Brain sat in with them and I came and hung out. I was intimidated by Axel. I was really quiet the first time I met him. I was scared of Dizzy too because he's very intense. I had met Richard and Frank before, but meeting everybody for this purpose, and especially meeting Slash and Duff, who I had no idea what to expect from them, I was really nervous. Naturally, I was just reminding myself who I was. You're Melissa Reese. You're a composer, producer, musician, singer. You are schooled. You know your theory, and you can read music. She also went on to say, but the band is very tight-knit, impenetrable family, and if so, if somebody gives an endorsement to somebody else that's listened to, it counted for a lot. That multiple people who were in the family had already said she can pull this she's rad at least take a look i was lucky i don't know who else might have been looking at or if there's anyone else i had two weeks to learn 30 to 50 songs for the first week of rehearsal i wasn't even in the same room as them i had isolated myself uh, to build my rig the setup for my gear and i was learning new a new music computer program mapping my keyboard learning the set i remember all of them one at a time would walk by and peek in my like preschoolers when are you going to play with us? They were just so excited to have me come in and hopefully be successful. It was sweet. I wasn't supposed to talk about what I was doing because the band wanted news of me joining to be a surprise and my dad has a big mouth. So the first time my parents saw me play, I just told my sister, can you bring them to Vegas and say that we're going to see the Blue Man Group or something? 
and my dad's looking around. This is a nice new arena, he said, referring to the T-Mobile arena. And then my mom is like, is that Liss? Is that Liss on stage? What's happening? Why is she there? My sister took a video of some of it. It's pretty funny. By the end, my mom's, uh, my mom's at the little fence jumping during Paradise City. Axel specifically is so proud of uh, to have a woman in the band. There was one conversation I remember. This was such a surreal moment in my life. Me, Axel, and Lenny Kravitz are in a room together, and he's like, Lenny, we've got a chick in our band. He was so excited, and Lenny's like, I know. He'd seen our show at the Troubadour, but yeah, Axel from the jump had my back. He at one point, he'd even given me a talk. If anybody tries to talk shit or any of this or that, I have your back. As much progress as our society and other societies have made with women's rights, there's still places and pockets where it's a boys club, and I think that's where my initial little fire came from. I wanted to be in the boys club. I wanted to say I have just as much knowledge, I can work har harder, I can just do I can ju do just as good as you, or if not better. So she also went on to say she gets lots of DMs and PMs all the time, whether on Facebook or Twitter, from these moms that have little kids saying, I grew up with music, but I took my little girl or son to the show, and they identified with you. And now they're not quitting piano, or they're learning to sing, and there's a picture that they drew of you, and the face is all effed up, but it has my three dots and my blue hair. I think, you see, you have to have hope. I hope that uh, when I'm old and gray, some effing chick comes up and takes over the world, and I'm just like, maybe I had 0.0001% to do with helping her hurl over her fence. So that does it for this episode of Guns N' Roses True Story. I hope you guys enjoyed that.